Okay. Now, having said that, I want to go to uh, Ignatius, and I'm not going. This is not a history lesson about Ignatius, who he was, and what ethnicity he was. Uh, nine chances out of ten, all these were not Israelites. They were Gentiles, primarily Greeks and Romans, right? And because that, those were the people that Shaul was sent to to minister to uh, during his ministry, right? And so he said some things that was very confusing in his in his lessons that kind of got people thrown off. We're gonna go to the letter that Ignatius wrote to a group of people called Magnesius. Once you download the um, the eSort app, you'll go to. 1-04-03 Ignatius Epistle to the Magnesians, right? Now the part that I want to read is I want to read the part which is uh, chapter chapter uh, chapter 9, right? It is under the heading that says let us live with Christ, right? This is chapter 9, okay? Now, Ignatius says this in this in this letter to the Magnesians, okay? He says now this this one you have in, in this let me save this here in this e sword they have a long version and they have a short version of what he wrote okay so I'm gonna read both versions of this particular chapter it's not a whole long chapter so I want to read this right he says if therefore those who were brought up in the ancient order of things have come to possess to the possession I should say of a new hope no longer observing the Sabbath. See that? But living in the observance of the Lord's day, right? On which also our life has sprung up again by him and by his death, whom some deny by which mystery we have obtained faith, right? And therefore endure that we may be found the disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read just the way it is. Disciples of Jesus Christ, our only master, how shall we be able to live apart from him whose disciples, the prophets themselves in the spirit, did wait for him as their teacher? And therefore we whom they rightly waited for, being come, raise them from the dead. Okay, now, that's the short version, right? I'm going to read the long version and then I'm going to expound on what I just read and then we're going to compare what was said there with the scripture of the original church, which is Israel. Okay, now here's the long version. If then those who were, con uh, who, let me back up. If then those who were conversant with the ancient scriptures came to newness of hope, expecting the coming of Christ as the Lord teaches us when he says, if you had believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. And then he has in parenthesis, John 5, 46. And again, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad for before Abraham was I am. And he has in parenthesis John 8, 56 and John 8, 58. How shall we be able to live without him? The prophets were his servants and, for, and foresaw him by the spirit and waited for him as their teacher and expected him as their Lord and Savior saying, he will come and save us. And he had parenthesis Isaiah 35 and 4. Let us therefore no longer keep the Sabbath after the Jewish manner. See that? So he's saying, let us not keep the Sabbath after the Jewish manner. Right? Okay. And rejoice in days of idleness for he that does not work, let him not eat. For say... And he has parenthesis 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. For say the holy oracles in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat thy bread. Genesis 3 and 19 in parenthesis. But let every one of you keep the Sabbath after a spiritual manner. Right? Okay. Rejoicing in meditation on the law, not in relaxation of the body, admiring the workmanship of I'm going to read just the way it is. God and not eating things pertaining the day before 
nor using lukewarm drinks and walking within a prescribed space, nor finding delight in dancing and, and plaudits, plaudits, which uh, have no sense in them. Okay? And after the observance of the Sabbath, let every friend of Christ keep the Lord's day. See that? As a festival. The resurrection day, the queen and chief of all the days of the week. Looking forward to this, the prophet declared to the end of the eighth day. Right? Psalm 6 and 1 through 10 and Psalm 12 and 1 through 8. On which our life both sprang up again and the victory over death was obtained in Christ, whom the children of perdition, the enemies of the Savior, deny, whose God is their belly. He has in parentheses Philippians 3 and 18 and Philippians 3 and 19. Right? Who are the lovers of pleasure and not lovers of, of God, quote, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He has put this 2 Timothy 3 and 4. These make merchandise of Christ, corrupting his word and giving up Jesus to sell. They are the corruptors of women and covetousness of other men's possessions, swallowing up wealth insatiably, from whom may you be delivered by the mercy of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so now. So there, I want to just kind of back up for, for a second. In the short form, right? Now, I don't know which particular form uh, that certain circles use, but the short one, right, it says basically, the long, the long version is explaining how to keep the Shabbat, but it's telling you not to keep the Shabbat on the Sabbath on the seventh day, but to keep it on the first day. Because they are calling the first day the Lord's day, right? Now, we we'll read Malachi chapter 3, one verse here. Um, Malachi chapter 3, and verse 6. Let's read verse 5 and 6. He says, I will come, this is the Most High Yah speaking, near to you to judgment. And I will be swift witness against the sorcerers, right? And against the adulterers, and against the false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right hand, and fear not me, says Yah Sabaoth. Verse 6. For I am Yahweh. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Yaakov are not consumed. So the Most High does not change. Right? Now, this guy is saying that we don't keep the Sabbath. First, he's saying we're going to keep the Lord's day. Number one, I can show you that the Lord's day, using that phraseology that's commonly used is not Sunday. Okay? The day of Yah is the same as quote unquote the Lord's day. It's the same day. Okay? It's the same. It has the same meaning. Right? It is not a literal day of the week. Okay? It's it's, it's a prophetic period of time called the day. Right? It's like when the Messiah uh, said, today is the day of salvation. Right? Okay? Uh, let me see if I can pull that out right quick. Let's look at Isaiah. Let's look at Yoshiyahu, chapter 49, verse 8. And it says, Thus says Yahweh, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee, right? I will preserve thee, I will give thee for a covenant of thy people to establish the earth and the cause to inherit the desolate heritage. So the Most Highest there says, in the day of salvation. So 
the day of salvation. We don't have to even go into the Hebrew or Greek to understand that the day of salvation, this means the day that you receive salvation. It could be any day of the week. It don't have to necessarily be a particular given, specific 24 hour period day, right? Now, uh, if we go to the brief Kadash, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, he says, For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation hath I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So now is not governed by a 24 hour period. The day of salvation is the same thing when he says the day of Yah or on Yah's day, right? What day are we talking about? The day or the period, the age of salvation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 because this is where the so-called church fathers have substituted the day of Yah in the day of the master, Yahshua, which is the day of salvation, which means the, pre the age of salvation. The period of time of salvation. Okay? Because in, in that period of salvation comes the day of judgment. So the day of Yah is all-inclusive of the day of salvation and the day of Yah's judgment, right? To render unto those who disobey Him their payment. Okay? All right, now, that's a whole lesson. I, I can sit here on the set and do a whole lesson on the day of Yah and show you that the day of Yah has to do with death and killing and judgment and, and freedom from those who are lawless, who are bound, who are thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death, and all of that. That's all a part of Yah's day. The day of Yah is not a 24 hour period. Okay? Now, the original day of Yah was the day of rest, which is what the whole thing, the whole millennium is significant of the day of Yah, which is the thousand years where he reigns. Let's start at verse 9, right? I, Yachanan, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, right? And in the kingdom and patience of Yahshua the Messiah was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of Yah and for the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. I was in the spirit on Yah's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. There's two ways we can look at that, okay? If you want to settle on your mind that the Lord's Day is Sunday, first thing we have to look at is the fact that it does not say in the text Sunday or first day of the week. It doesn't give a specific reference to any particular day. It just says that he was in the spirit on Yah's day. Okay? Now, if we want to be specific and label and list it and zero it down to a literal day, that day would have to be the seventh day. I'll tell you why. If we go back to Genesis, the very beginning, chapter one, right? We will get the day that the Most High established, okay, as the day. Uh, let's go to chapter 2. I, I said chapter 1. Let's go to chapter 2. Verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. Thus, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, see that? Yah, it says in the in the Hebrew Elohim, ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made, right? And Yah blessed 
not the first day, the seventh day, and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work and Yah created and made. So he blessed the seventh day. So if there was a 24 hour period called Yah's day, that Revelation 1 and 10 is making reference to the Shabbat or the seventh day, not the first day of the week. Okay? Now, those that say, oh, it's making a reference to the first day of the week, if you want to go that route, you cannot prove that the Messiah rose on Sunday. We're going to read Justin Martyr. The reference is, if you, if you, if you have the E-Sword, right, you go to 1... Uh, 07, right? So it's 1.07 and dot .04. Okay? It's listed under the first apology of Justin, right? Now, under the heading, because he's got a lot of stuff he said here, but I want to read this one in particular. Uh, it says, The Weekly Worship of Christians. And we afterwards continually remind each other of these things and the wealth among us help the needy and we always keep together and for all things wherewith we are supplied we bless the maker of all through his son I'm going to read it just as it is Jesus Christ and through the Holy Ghost and on the day called Sunday see that he says all who live in cities or in countries gathered together to one place and memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read. Hmm. As long as time permits, then when the reader has ceased, the president verbally instructs and exhorts to the imitation of these good things. Then we all rise together and pray, and as we before said, when our prayers is ended, bread and wine and water are brought, and the president in like manner offers prayers and thanksgiving according to his ability. So now, here's my question. When did the president start offering prayers? <laughs> That's a whole nother lesson. All right, now, and the people are sent saying, Amen. And there is a distribution to each and a participation of that over which thanks have been given. And to those who are absent, a portion is sent by the deacons. And they who are all well to do and willing give what each thinks fit. Hmm. Kind of sound like an offering, huh? And what is collected is deposited with the president. So I guess the president is the pastor, I guess, I don't know. Who succors the orphans and the widows and those who through sickness or any other cause are in want. And those who are in bonds and the strangers so joining among us and in the word takes care of all who is in need. But Sunday is the day on which we all hold our common assembly because it is the first day on which God, having wrought a change in darkness and made, uh, have, having wrought a change in darkness and matter, made the world and Jesus Christ our Savior on the same day rose from the dead. For he was crucified on the day before Saturn. See that? This is what this is what the church father's saying. He was crucified before Saturn. Okay? Which is the day Saturday is named after Saturn, right? But the most high calls it the seventh day, right? That's another lesson. Who was crucified on the day before Saturn? So they're saying he was crucified on Friday, what the world calls Friday, which is the sixth day, and and they have the parenthesis Saturn, Saturday, and on the day after that of Saturn, which is the day of the sun, having appeared to his apostles and disciples, he taught them these things 
which he have submitted to you also for your consideration. Now, so, um, our brother, who am I reading from? Justin Martyr is just telling us that the Messiah died on Friday and he rose on Sunday, which is two days later, right? So now, let's see what the Messiah himself said about when he was going to die and when he was going to rise, okay? So, now, can you count three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday? Got to have some strange math, don't you? So now, let's go to the text. Let's go to Matthew. We're going to show you that the Messiah could not have died on Friday and rose on Sunday, which would make this particular uh, statement in error. And it is something that has been created to support paganism and falsehood, right? Okay. So let's go to Matthew's, the Matif Yahoo, chapter 12. All right. Matif Yahoo, chapter 12. Any writing that doesn't line up with this is not inspirational, brothers. This is just that simple. Matthews 12 and 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh a sign, seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days, three, three, see that? Three. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, here's the question. Somebody said, well, that's just an idiom. Or that's just a uh, symbolic meaning. Okay? Well, let me ask you a dumb question. When Jonah was in the belly of the whale was he in there literally was he in there a literal three days and three or was it just an idiom okay all right let's see let's go to let's go to the book of Jonah Jonah chapter one and let's see. We're not going to read the whole thing. I just want to read that one verse there. It says, Now Yahweh had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly, right, of the fish three days and three nights, right? So Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. So you can't count three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday morning. So you have, if the Messiah died on Good Friday and went down into the grave, at sundown that Friday, we started the weekly Shabbat because the times and, and that day went from sundown to sundown. The day began when the sun went down. So that started the seventh day. Okay? So if the Messiah died on Friday and was buried, he was in the grave. On the Shabbat, the weekly 
day of repose. So you count Friday night, which is the Shabbat night, because Shabbat goes from evening to day. So the night portion would be Shabbat night. And then the day portion would be Shabbat day. So you go from Shabbat night, which is equivalent to the Greco-Roman Friday night. Saturday night would be the second night. And Sunday night would be the third night. So for him to fulfill three nights, we already see that he couldn't have raised from the dead until Monday morning. Right? So we count it Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. That's three nights. So if we count three days, we can't count Friday because he didn't go into the grave until Friday night. So we can't count until Saturday day. Okay. So now that starts to count Saturday day, Sunday day, Monday day. So that means that the Messiah could not have re resurrected until Monday night. If he fulfilled the prophecy that he said, I will give you a sign, right? But now, brother Justin Martyr told us that the Messiah died on the day before Saturday and rose on the day after Saturday, which is not three days. That's not inspired, brothers and sisters. The amazing thing is that how can people be so intelligent with the wealth of knowledge with scholarly uh, wisdom of the world, but can't count three days and three nights. Scholarly, but can't count. Okay? So that's Justin Martyr. He says, all right? Now, I'm going to read one more church father, and then we're going to show you what the apostles taught, including the Messiah and Shaul himself, right? So now we're going to go to another alleged letter that was written by a convert, Gentile convert at that, by the name of Methodus. He was ascribed to being a convert under um, under Shaul, who the world calls Paul. It's called the Epistle of Methodus. The it's Methodus Epistle to uh, Dionetus. Dionetus. Now, I may not pronounce the name correctly because once again I'm not Roman or Greek. Because I'm doing my best. Okay. I think it's Dionetus. It's under the Esword 1.02.02. Under the Anti Nicene Fathers, Volume 1. Okay. So 1.02.02. .02. Methodus Episcopal to Dognatus. Okay. Under the heading of the customs of the nations. Let's read that. We're just going to read that part there. It's a lot. He said a lot. But we're going to read this one part here, right? It reads as follows. For the Christians are distinguished for the Christians are distinguished from other men neither by country nor language nor the customs which they observe. So, in other words, Christians are not distinguished. Okay? He says Christians are not are for the Christians are distinguished from uh, from let me read again. For the Christians are distinguished from other men neither by country nor language nor customs which they observe. So in other words, there is no difference between the Christians and these other countries or men 
or customs which they observe, right? Now, I do believe that Shaul says something about come out from among them and be separate. Was that Shaul that says that? Wherefore, come out from among them, right? This is what Shaul said. Now, so if Methodus is a convert of Shaul, Shaul said, come out from among them. And be ye separate, says Yah, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. But not, but that's not what Methodus is saying, right? Methodus is saying what? Christians are not distinguished from other men, neither by country, nor languages, nor customs which they observe. For they neither inhabit cities of their own, nor employ a peculiar form of speech, nor lead a life which is marked out by singularity. The course of conduct which they follow has not been devised by any speculation or deliberation of inquisitive men, nor do they, like some, proclaim themselves the advocates of any merely human doctrine, but inhabiting Greeks as well as barbarian cities according as the lot of each of them has determined and following the customs of the natives in respect to clothing, food, and the rest of their ordinary conduct, they display to us their wonderful and confess, confessly striking method of life. Huh. Now, so, in other words, they adopt the customs of the lands where they go. This is what um, Methodus is saying. Now, let's go and see what the Most High said, right? Already, Shaul told you come out from among them be you separate, right? Uh, let's see. I can go into the brief Kadash. I can go to Yahoo. Let's go to Yahoo first. Let's go to Jeremiah, Yahoo. Chapter 10. Okay? Because the first church came in Israel and they laid the law. 10 and 2. Thus saith Yah, learn not the ways of the heathens. <coughs> learn not the ways of the heathens. And be not dismayed at the signs of heavens. For the heathens are dismayed at them. Verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut of the tree out the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, and with the axe. And they deck it with silver and gold. And they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is in them to do good. See that? So he said, learn not the ways. But Justin, uh, uh, um, Methodus says, there is no difference. Right? So therefore, the, the, the church, according to him, can do like the world. They, had, they had embraced the customs of the people. They embraced the pagan festivities of Christmas and they embraced the pagan festivities of Easter and Starte. And they embraced the pagan customs and festivities of, 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 of Halloween, Sam Hain, all of the, the days that are vain. All the customs of the heathen are vain. The Most High said, don't, don't learn those ways. Shaul said, come out from among them and be you separate, right? Touch not the unclean thing, right? Now, there's one other, one other person, a prophet, said something about uh, loving not the world. This is the beloved John, Yachanan, first Yachanan. Said, uh, love not the world, this is first Yachanan 2.15, neither the things that are in the world. Any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. See that? 
So when you become like the people where you live, you are loving the world and not turning away. That's not what Brother Matthias is teaching. If, if this is authentic writing from him, he is a direct follower of Yachanan who says, love not the world. But this man is saying, be like the customs of the people where you are. It's not inspired. It's demonically influenced. Right? Now, I'm going to have to probably do a part two, maybe three or four, because I'm not even halfway done yet. 